Okay, I think we can start because uh, most of the people are here. And so uh, today's session, we will have uh, Paul Wigman from the University of Chicago that uh, we speak about hydrodynamics of fractional quantum all state as area preserving diffeomorphism. Please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. <clears throat> In just a moment, let me set up. So um, the story which I would like to uh, to describe is um, just a bit different angle um, approaching hydrodynamics of fractional quantum whole states. And uh, uh, I have two uh, friends uh, physically present in the audience is uh, Andrea and Sasha whom we often discuss this issue, uh, but uh, I have, uh, uh, I remain, uh, the kind of feeling remains that things are not, has not been uh, understood properly or reached uh, um, common understanding. So basically this talk uh, emphasizes one uh, aspect of this hydrodynamics which may, may need to be clarified. I will be a little bit, um, I will uh, avoid uh, technicalities as much as I can. Still will be some few long formulas. Okay, so let me start. Uh, so the question is, where is the place of, um, um, of the theory of fractional quantum pole effect? So if you say this word, fractional quantum pole effect, uh, then immediately this wave function, Laughlin wave function came in mind. And uh, that's uh, not the ask where does it come from, uh, simply because it's impossible to answer. Um, uh, but it's there. And uh, um, it starts from this formula and basically ends by this formula. Um, okay. Uh, let me explain what is written here. So um, we, are, we are talking about electrons on a plane um, in a strong magnetic field in electrons perhaps interacting. And they form a state with a fractional feeling. This feeling fraction is a number of particles, number of electrons, uh, which is actually N divided by uh, total uh, magnetic flux. Magnetic field is B and flux is B times volume. That's two numbers if you put a system on a sphere mm. and uh, new is a ratio. Uh, each number is uh, huge. It's uh, uh, ten, typically in semiconductors it's 10 to the 12, but so it's a ratio of uh, two numbers, each of them have 12 digits. But somehow um, electronic systems select uh, a certain fraction, for example, one third. It's, half, it's hard to believe that uh, two numbers with the 12 digits ratio between is exactly one third, but the system select this fraction, remove, uh, if the ratio is not like that, uh, it's, uh, I don't know what does it do with these electrons, put it in the corner of the system, remove them, um, but uh, like the fraction one third, and uh, therefore beta is three, for example. And then this is a wave function of uh, 10 to the 12 particles sitting in uh, coordinates zi, I is the label of the particle, mm. and Z uh, is a complex coordinate. Okay, that's why functions vanish when particles approach to each other as a monom, as a distance between them, holomorphic, uh, with a degree beta. Beta is maybe three for, for the purpose of this discussion. Okay, uh, major property of this wave function is that it is holomorphic, and that happened because all states, uh, uh, all particles are sitting on the 
lowest Landau level, which means that magnetic field is sufficiently large. Um, and uh, high levels do not participate. And that translates that the, this factor is entirely holomorphic. Important property. <clears throat> okay, so we can do many things with these wave functions. Uh, study it, uh, study the correlation function, which people do, and I show some results of this. Uh, but uh, that's a wave function of the ground state, the ground state. Um, so it's supposed to be eigenstate of some Hamiltonian, which is not uh, immediately clear. And there are higher states of this Hamiltonian, which are even less clear. Uh, still, um, even without understanding the origin of uh, this formula, we can uh, immediately start uh, to compute something, uh, some correlation function. For example, uh, this wave function is, uh, if I square it, it's a um, uh, probability density of finding particles here and there on the plane. So we can compute various uh, expectation values, uh, for example, one particle is fixed, position of one particle is fixed, position on another particle say is fixed, but others are flying around, what's the probability to find them in given position, this kind of questions. Okay. Um, and the, there are two natural questions. Everybody who, who enters the field uh, must ask, herself or himself a question why in the world we discuss 10 to the 12 particles by in terms of the wave function um, what is this object which has 10 to the 12 arguments right so we all know that uh, many body system must be discussed described by fields quantum fields and that's not happened in this subject why it's not happened in this subject, I, not really clear for historical reasons or whatever. People try to write various field theories uh, to describe this wave function, to my view, unsatisfactory, unsatisfactory. Uh, but one of them, but it must be there. For example, if this is, if this theory is learned, is written, um, it uh, may produce a Hamiltonian which gives this uh, wave function as a ground state. Having the Hamiltonian, a good thing to have because we can study high order state, high, high excited states, uh, information of which is not even, read, is, is not present in this um, wave function. But experiments exist for higher excited states. Uh, there are many optical, some optical properties are known. You send light on the sample and uh, um, not only the ground state involved, but uh, excited states involved, they could be measured. Although these experiments are very poor, but still they exist. There is also dynamics on the edge, which can be, uh, which is accessible, um, this kind of things. Okay. okay. Um, so, but in fact, uh, and this has been understood, uh, mm, relatively recently, uh, the Hamiltonian could be obtained um, uh, from uh, um, one basic uh, physical fact, um, which we must add to this wave function. And this, is, this physical fact is that electronic, it's a declaration, electronic states in quantum hole regime is uh, incompressible fluid. Um, treat this statement as an experimental fact. Uh, what is, this, does this statement consist of? It consists of two things, fluid and incompressible. F the fact that it's fluid is experimental fact. It doesn't follow from anything. Um, but uh, there's a, plenty of uh, evidence that it's fluid. Now the word incompressible 
essentially means that um, when particles move, uh, their velocity is uh, divergence free. That's translates to the fact that wave function is holomorphic, depends on Z, not on Z bar. And I'm not talking about this, uh, this uh, factor, uh, which is uh, additive uh, with respect to particles, only about this factor. This factor is holomorphic. And that translates that the fluid is incompressible. Why it is holomorphic? Because all states, you're talking about states on the lowest Landau level, right? Okay, so uh, this simple declaration, which I put it in the box, Mm, the electronic states of quantum hole effect, quantum hole regime is incompressible fluid itself allows to construct the Hamiltonian. Uh, and uh, basically a reason for that, that uh, fluids obey hydrodynamics and uh, if it is incompressible, this hydrodynamic basically unique. Um, some people manage to generalize hydrodynamics, but, uh, but uh, I doubt it uh, makes sense. So hydrodynamic is unique if the fluid is incompressible. And that's a uh, foundation of uh, finding uh, this Hamiltonian. Um, yeah. Actually, I will appreciate questions um, or remarks um, uh, while I'm talking. It will be useful for me. Okay, so, <clears throat> so what I'm going to show is uh, not, a, not really show, but um, argue and present the results, how to construct um, this hydrodynamics, which is unique. Uh, is sort of uh, is sort of there. Um, 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 uh, hydrodynamic doesn't require knowledge of uh, microscope. Any microscopic knowledge is not required. It's uh, motion of the fluid, um, and uh, if it is incompressible, there is no room to to a fantasy assumptions, it's, uh, it's uh, fixed, sort of. Um, okay. And that's what I'm going to um, argue. Okay. Uh, I just would like to summarize what I have said. <coughs> that um, fractional quantum hole what it means, interacting states on the lowest Landau level, that's the definition in brackets. And uh, by experiment, we know that it's liquid. Um, by set, sending magnetic field up, we know that the fluid is incompressible, which means that all states are holomorphic. Mm. Also, experiment shows that it's absolutely dissipation free with a huge um, precision, that is this factor, fact. Um, it's inviscid and non-resistive. It's sufficiently small temperature. Um, that, simple, that means that uh, whole conductance is actually quantized with a huge precision uh, and there is a plateau. It doesn't change when we change chemical magnetic field for a while. Okay, then we know that uh, this fluid is uh, very, very quantum, um, right? Uh, whole conductance quantized in uh, fundamental units, uh, and uh, this is quantum units which involve each bar, and in, it's quantized uh, with uh, unmatched precision, uh, so it's very quantum. Um, and also we know that flows are chiral, which means that uh, particles are sitting in magnetic field. Magnetic field say is up and uh, the uh, particles rotate along small orbits um, clockwise altogether. 
Okay. And that uh, box is enough to, this box is enough to write not only the Hamiltonian, but also this function. So if you really want to know foundation of this function, where does it come from? Well, there are many arguments. Um, of its origin, not particularly convincing, but uh, one of them is this box. So if you postulate this box, we write left and right function and we write the Hamiltonian all together. Okay. Yes, that's um, mm, it's, another, it's an adjunct of the talk. Okay. Uh, so, uh, but then what's the question will be what's an obstacle then? Why not, uh, why it has not been written and widely accepted uh, years ago? Uh, whole effects exist since 18, 1883, almost 40 years. Um, so why this question has not been um, asked or solved before? Um, it's not very clear, but one possibility is, one possible answer is that uh, hydrodynamics exists. Yes, we know about it, there are books written, but uh, the fluid is quantum and very quantum. And quantum hydrodynamics doesn't exist. It's not really developed. And, uh, so why quantum Hall effects is a particularly interesting subject. There are many reasons why people like it, but one of them is that it gives us a, a kind of uh, send light to what quantum hydrodynamic is about. Uh, perhaps quantum hydrodynamics has more interesting applications beyond quantum Hall effect, but so far that's uh, the, one of the major examples. <clears throat> so maybe the major obstacle of uh, to that is quantum hydrodynamics has never been systematically hydrodynamics has never been systematically quantized. Okay. But when we operate with quantum Hall effect and we do some calculations with this wave function, we essentially quantize hydrodynamics without even no 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 noticing it, and uh, that's kind of the main thing. Okay. Now, because hydrodynamics is incompressible, as I said, it's unique. Uh, and, uh, and because it's unique, um, uh, it possesses a kind of major and rather remarkable property. Uh, if we know just one state, ground state and assume a sort of adiabaticity uh, which takes place in quantum Hall states, then we know about all other states because hydrodynamic is unique. One state is sufficient. It's never happened in, uh, um, it's a sort of unique situation. Usually if you have a ground state, of some Hamiltonian, you can't restore the Hamiltonian because there are other excited states which are not uh, really related to the ground state. Mm. There's no way to construct Hamiltonian it, and all other states just looking for one particular state, but not in this case. Um, and uh, I sort of, uh, invite you to appreciate this uh, statement. Um, um, when I say hydrodynamics, uh, it means that particles move around in time. <clears throat> uh, but uh, when we talk about eigenstates, for example, ground state, it's a kind of stationary state. When particles don't move anywhere, it's a ground state, they sit. 
from a uh, hydrogen point of view, language is, it means that, it means um, that uh, the ground state is a stationary state. When particles do have velocity, and velocity can be computed from the wave function by taking a gradient and uh, divided by the wave, by the wave function, uh, take a phase, and the gradient of this phase, that will be velocity. So they move, but they don't accelerate. Uh, that means the state is an uh, eigenstate, particularly the ground state. Okay. Um, uh, incompressibility basically tells us that if you know the um, uh, stationary flow, no acceleration but velocity, stationary flow, we can describe uniquely, it determines uniquely all non-stationary flow, basically everything. That's the interesting feature which I would like to rely on. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> what is the origin of this feature? Um, the origin is widely appreciated in uh, fluid mechanics. Mm, and it's basically say that incompressible flow flows is a uh, group action. Uh, what does it mean? It means the following that I have a collection of particles and today they stay in one position, but next, next um, pick a second, they move to another position. It's a flow. And uh, it so happens that this flow could be understood as a group action. There is an action of certain group such that if I take a state in point time, time point T, and then later I find the state in time plus DT next moment, that's the flow passage of uh, time T to DT state. It's a flow, but this flow is this position, th th this new state is related to the previous state. <clears throat> by action of some group. <coughs> but it's also action of the Hamiltonian, obviously, and this group is related to the Hamiltonian. Once you identify the group, you know the dynamics. You know the... And uh, I, for example, if fluid would be compressible, that um, sometimes could be the case, but in most cases is not. Um, for barotropic fluid, it's also the case, but uh, it's definitely the case for incompressible fluid. So, as soon as you know the group which uh, move um, particles around, um, you may identify this group, Lie algebra of this group with, uh, um, with the Hamiltonian. Um, Maybe somebody want to raise objection from this point to this point of view or uh, discuss it before I go further. <clears throat> mm. By the way, am I hurt? Because I, I don't see the feedback. I don't know, am I hurt? Yes. Yes. Oh, good. Because I don't see, I don't really see the audience, and why I don't see the audience? What? What? Sorry. Um, I don't see the room, so I don't really know where, whether I'm heard or not. Is there any way for me to see the room? But so far, there are no questions, I think. 
No, no, I understand, but uh, on my screen, I don't see the room. The room? Yes, it, it was uh, but because the camera is on the on the back of the room. Okay, I'm not supposed to see the room, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. It's fine. Okay, so let me then continue. Uh, now the question is, uh, what is this group? Um, um, uh, but this group is uh, well identified because uh, fluid is incompressible, which means that uh, pieces of fluid, uh, when moving, uh, they may change uh, parcels of fluid, may change shape, but not the volume. That's it, incompressibility. And this group is uh, quite known. It's uh, it's called uh, SDIF, <coughs> which is called sim S stays for symplectic, and D for diffeomorphism. It's symplectic diffeomorphism, same as in, as in uh, classical mechanics when we talk about uh, phase flow. Uh, then the flow is also incompressible by Liouville theorem. It's the same group. Uh, but um, it's a fine group, contrary to mechanics. It's a fine group because there is infinitely many degrees of freedom. It's uh, in every point of the space, uh, except in any point of the space on any parcel. Uh, and uh, it appears in physics in many different aspects and uh, also called W infinity group. Okay. So the point I wish uh, view which I would like to deliver is once this group is identified and as W infinity or symplectic diffeomorphism the way you like it, call it the way you like it, uh, then uh, the Hamiltonian also, also I must follow somehow. It's uh, just a technical question how to determine it. Um, so, mm, okay, and uh, we can put it in different language. Um, pop, one of the popular language, in, but mostly in mathematics, is that every flow is a coadjoint orbit of SDF. Um, coadjoint orbit, uh, construction of conjoint orbit is a well established thing, but not for SDF. Is this a pretty complicated group? Which... Hello, question, question. Yes. I, I, I'm not sure I understand. There, there is a group which is like infinitely dimensional, it's huge. And Hamiltonian is just one particular uh, function which generates flow on, on, on the space, on the phase space. Mm -hmm. What do you mean if I know group, I know Hamiltonian? It's, I, I'm not sure I understand. Uh, that's a concise, concise in this formula. So um, a group means actually flow, flow as a group means that if you know the state in moment time t, then act, action of this group move it to the flow to the state in time d time plus uh, in a different time. That's action of the group. Which which element of the group? There are many. There are many because there are many positions. There's also many positions. Every element leads to a flow. <coughs> is, is psi many body wave function or a single particle? No, I'm talking about many body wave function. No, uh, just one. Uh, the concept um, flow as a group, it's a general concept. Uh, flow in the phase space for one uh, mechanical particles is also action of the group. In that, in that case, it's called uh, diffeomorphism of uh, mapping curve to itself, uh, diffeomorphism of curves. Uh, when it's many body system, uh, this group is affine, but uh, the concept relate, uh, remains the same, uh, remains the same. So group has many elements, um, yes, uh, is parameterized by many different parameters. Uh, as well as flow. But evolution, but from another point of view, evolution is driven by the Hamiltonian. 
So Hamiltonian must be a certain element of the Lie algebra of this group. But but it's one particular element. So how is it fixed uh, one by knowing the group? Yes, yes. It's fixed by some additional um, additional data, which I'm going to talk. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But it's important to understand that group flow is action is a group action. Uh, that's maybe too general statement, but in this case, it is very particular group. This is deep. Okay. Okay. Now. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, the rest of the talk, uh, I actually don't know how to solve this problem in general, but. Uh, um, but I know practical recipes, how to get to the concept, to the result. The result I would like to show and uh, speak about uh, a kind of a practical re recipe kitchen, how to do this. But I'm pretty sure that uh, it must be, must be developed on kind of well set, not in the kitchen, not in the, as a cottage industry, but on some, uh, uh, solid uh, uh, ground, which has not happened so far, but uh, I, I, I'm just about to show you the result and how to, how to build it, some recipe, how to build it. But first, a uh, few words about um, area preserving diffeomorphisms in quantum Hall effect. Um, as I said, the area preserving diffeomorphism in, in has many different names, and one of them is double infinity. So I can't, I can't uh, uh, resist uh, a pleasure to um, to uh, acknowledge that uh, double infinity concept has been brought to the subject by Andrea, uh, by Andrea Capelli. In, uh, Sorry. Sorry? I don't hear you. Uh, you, 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 probably, uh, you probably expressed some displeasure, but I don't hear you, so I can't comment. <laughs> it's not my idea. It doesn't work. Okay, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's, it's not I, my. It's not my idea. I took it from uh, Sakita, and apparently Sakita got it from Vadia. So, uh, uh -huh. good. Uh, yeah, there is a history, and um, it, also, actually, uh, as far as I understand, that as far as I remember, Andrea works is late eighties, uh, beginning of nineties, or maybe beginning of nineties. Uh, but before that, it has been appeared in uh, celebrated. Uh, paper by given McDonald Klatzman without that name. They didn't uh, know mathematical concept, uh, but wrote something similar. So if you read between lines, you see uh, that uh, they also understood it. And let me, uh, but also, okay, on this occasion, on this occasion, uh, I also would like to uh, uh, Thanks and invite you, everybody who is here, to thanks Andrea for organizing this con this uh, event. Not only this event, but many events in uh, Galileo Institute. Uh, this this is particular one in these difficult difficult conditions. And Andrea, thank you very much for having us uh, the possibility and pleasure to be uh, to be in this institute. Okay, saying that, uh, let me formulate what, um, it's a kind of grotesque formulation, what uh, this uh, SDF means. It uh, has many formulations, but one of them uh, through the density. Uh, so let me consider density of particles. And uh, it's, uh, I put hat, which means operator. Uh, and it's, um, Consider its Fourier transform. 
So if, um, if you think about uh, density of particles as uh, collection of delta functions for every particle, then its Fourier transform will be sum of uh, all particles. This is its the coordinates, uh, but normal ordered, so which means that Z and uh, Z dagger uh, have been ordered and uh, this operator acting in the Bergman space, which means that Z dagger has to be understood as, as uh, derivative in Z. Z is a holomorphic coordinate. And K here is also a holomorphic coordinate, um, KX plus K. Yeah. Okay, uh, that density operator is the, the generator of um, the area preserving the uh, We can compute them, it's very explicit, it's very explicit, so this is coordinate and this is a derivative. Uh, we can compute them and obtain, uh, uh, obtaining um, relation um, the algebra between uh, density labeled by two-dimensional momentum, different two-dimensional momentum. This is the algebra. Okay. <clears throat> uh, well, we can write many, many formulas for W infinity or SD, but that's sufficient for that matter. Looking on that, we may recognize that uh, this is actually, yeah, and replace uh, commutator by Poisson brackets, we can recognize that this is the same algebra which appears in incompressible hydrodynamics for vorticity. Okay. okay. Uh, so, as uh, Sasha noticed that uh, W infinity of SD itself uh, form a sort of symplectic structure for um, symplectic structure, natural symplectic structure in the state where uh, this quantum hole states uh, in the space of quantum hole states, but uh, it's not sufficient to determine the Hamiltonian. And for that, we need some uh, minimum other assumptions, but I bring them to absolute, to absolute minimum. Okay. Mm. Looking for that formula, looking for that formula, as I said, we, we associated with um, symplectic structure of vorticity in incompressible uh, hydrodynamics. And what it means that if there is a fluid which moves with velocity V, the curl of this velocity is called vorticity, and it must be associated with uh, density of electrons if you want to interpret that form. Okay, let's bring us bring me to correspondence between uh, um, fluid and uh, electronic systems. Every electron must be treated as a fluid. So this is density of vortices from fluid point of view, but also density of electrons from electronic point of view. This is a formula. Um, there are many ways to play around this, with this formula. For example, if you take Laughlin wave function and compute the velocity by taking gradient of its phase, you will get the same formula. Okay. Uh, so chirality of this flow means that we have a fluid and this fluid rotating, rotating. While rotating, it's create many vortices. If it's rotating fast, uh, create many vortices and each vortex associated with electrons in magnetic field. And magnetic field mimics the rotation, okay? So, and this is what we want to study, how vortices move in fluids or how electrons move in magnetic fields, the same thing. Okay, now uh, answering this, uh, such a question. So in order to get the Hamiltonian, finally, 
you just uh, declare that it's a minimum um, Galilean invariant Hamiltonian which uh, required by Galilean invariants. Uh, simply kinetic energy. So take a velocity square divided by two, it's a kinetic energy. But this kinetic energy has a dimension of energy and in quantum pole effects, there is, in, when I write Laughlin wave function, there is no scale of energy. But physically it exists, it's called gap in uh, quantum pole effect. And uh, that will be natural coefficients to dimensional coefficient to put, uh, to put here to convert velocity meter divided by seconds to units of energy. It's going through this gap, through this gap, which is a parameter sitting outside of Laughlin wave function. Uh, must be introduced phenomenologically. But only this parameter, nothing else. And the rest will follow from Laughlin wave function. <clears throat> so, I'm, am I answering your question about uh, additional assumptions about Newtonian? Yes, you did, but why Galilean invariance? Uh, there is no Galilean invariance in, in lattice, and quantum Hall effect seems does not depend on it. So why is this the main principle? I heard this one once, uh, this question, and it's always uh -huh. amazed me. Uh, for example, take integer quantum Hall effects, which we know very well. What is the Hamiltonian? It's a momentum square over two mass, right? Uh, well, in real quantum Hall effect, there is a lattice, there are corrections to dispersion, but it's still there. So. It can be taken p squared over 2m, but it's not essential for the effect. Just, just I'm, I'm sorry. You're asking me about where is why Galilean invariance. First of all, I don't think I don't actually know anything else. Well, if I take v squared plus small coefficient times v to the fourth, yes, will it will it ruin whole effect? Yes, absolutely, but it will be. High, high order corrections, which requires different energy scales, important. And we don't know any additional energy scales in quantum Hall effect, it's only the gap. But if it's there, if there are high order corrections, fine, um, let it be. Um, they will become important maybe on higher energies, but in small energy, it's Galilean invariant. This is a leading order. This is leading order uh, in uh, gradients. And uh, you can add uh, high order corrections, but you can Sorry, add low, low order corrections. That's yeah, my question is Is that precise form of the Hamiltonian important or it can be corrected and the effect is still there? So that's, that's uh, probably. You know, this question equally addressed to the first page of any hydrodynamic book. You open a book on hydrodynamics, Euler equation. For some reason, Euler's, Euler said that uh, uh, there is a kinetic energy given by Galileo, which is V square over two, period. What else to add? And for integer quantum Hall effect, we know that it's exactly true. So it's- uh, Okay, thank you. Parabolic band, um, but I'm saying that I'm saying that this question is separated from specific of quantum Hall effect. It's about fluids. Why different fluids for different fluids with different chemistry and uh, environment? We are writing Hamiltonian, which is. Uh, uh, Galilean kinetic energy. Why? It's the same question. And the, the quantum Hall effect is not specific. So it's a fluid. So it's okay, but this is only what I can say. Yeah, I think it's okay. Just one second.
Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm back. I'm back. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, but this is what I can only can comment. So I don't know what to say about it. So you can add many things, but it's not necessary. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, if we assume that, if we assume that, we can rewrite it in terms of uh, densities or operators in uh, of W infinity. Uh, because density is vorticity, as we discussed before, if I know velocity, I can compute density, and density is elements of uh, W infinity. So this is a Hamiltonian, V square over two. In terms of density, it's inverse Laplace here, and uh, that's uh, brackets, uh, and, uh, that's basically it. Okay, uh, and that is elementary thing. The not elementary is what to do with this formula, because that's in a complicated operator with non-canonical brackets. And uh, writing this thing is a cheap statement, uh, because basically we have to understand what does it mean when two operators of this complicated group are placed in the same point, like here. What does this mean? Without saying that, that's, that's writing doesn't uh, make any sense. Uh, I mean, we can write it, but it doesn't bring any uh, quantitative, uh, Conclusions. Yeah. So the major issue is start from this. Is uh, suppose we assume this Hamiltonian, which is Galilean, and that's suppose on brackets uh, which came from a diff from the fact that particles are on the first Landau level, and uh, then uh, um, and then uh, we have to decide what to do with this. Um, but having this Hamiltonian, we can already write uh, Euler equation, not a problem. The problem is that it's uh, not clear what we're writing because uh, here's velocity, here's another velocity, inertial term, they stay sitting in the same point. What does it mean? Not clear. Any computation leads to infinity. And uh, that's where the problem starts. Okay. Uh, well, there is a simple exercise which I usually skip in talks, but it's in here. How to show that starting from Euler equation, very standard Euler equation, but quantum. Quantum means that boson brackets here, it's built out of operators obeying this. Um, so it's uh, obeying this algebra. Um, how to obtain <coughs> that uh, stationary flow is uh, given by Laplace function. Stationary flow means that we drop this part, no acceleration, and uh, study stationary equation and see that its solution is Laplace function. It's not a difficult uh, story, but a bit technical. I skipped. Okay. Now, <coughs> now, what do we really want? from this equation? Uh, well, we would like to um, obtain the equation not for operators, that's cheap. We would like to obtain the equations for expectation values. And when we do expectation values, we have to understand what does it mean expectation value of two operators sitting at the same point? How it's decoupled to expectation value of velocity itself. Once that's solved, that I would say that we construct hydrodynamics. Um, so we would like to average this equation. That will bring me relation between one point expectation value to two point expectation value, and it's not an equation. Before you really say what, uh, how to sort of decouple the two-point expectation value 
in terms of one point expectation value, then we are in Faber's limit. Before that, Euler equation is elementary obtained word identity, which connect one point function to two point function. Okay. Okay, but suppose we manage to do this. Suppose we manage to do this. Then we are in a classical uh, domain. We operate with expectation values. Um, instead of operator, we are looking for um, expectation values. And then Poisson brackets, uh, sorry, commutator must be replaced by Poisson brackets. And then, then, then it will be hydrodynamics. I would call it hydrodynamics. And uh, in the remaining, I don't know how many minutes do I have? How many minutes do I have? Five. Five. In the five minutes, I would like to show <coughs> the recipe how to um, how to do exactly that, how to uh, sort of um, this chain of re uh, relation between one point function to two point function, how to resolve it. And in order to resolve it, we need to, um, there is an important concept of uh, structure factor. Structure factor is correlation function between two densities, two densities with respect to the ground state. So I take Laughlin wave function fixed to positions, integrate over all the rest, take a Fourier transform, and that's what I get. That entire, that's characteristic of only one state, the ground state. You don't need to know anything else, right? It's not easy to compute, but possible and has been done. And uh, in this book, there are formulas. Um, I write it in two forms, inverse and, um, and just structure function. Inverse is much more compact and that's how it, each term is identified. And uh, this is how it has been computed. Uh, but usually in the book it's presented inverse in this form and then it's pretty ugly. Um, it looks a bit uh, funny, uh, but this is how it is. It's exact formula. It has many interesting features. For example, this point, this uh, this factor actually has, has been computed by, understood by Girvin, McDonald, Platzman. Uh, that factor is responsible for what people call uh, odd viscosity. And uh, this is uh, related to the gravitational anomaly. Uh, and there is a high expansion, but they're not uh, high expansion, but it's not important. If you inverse it, it's that formula, which has interesting feature, exactly at mu equal one third. It's a major fraction of people compute Hall effect. Th this entire term vanish. So the next term k to the six vanish and only k to the eight. It has a catastrophic consequences. I mean, very, very important consequences, but I'm not in a position to discuss them now. For, for this particular, very particular fraction. Okay. Uh, also this formula show what people called uh, duality between uh, completely filled Landau level and, uh, sorry, between particles and holes of field, uh, partial field Landau levels. And this duality is hidden with the transformation one over two new, uh, anyway, it's hidden uh, in this formula. Okay, okay, so um, let me take then uh, this Hamiltonian and I naively um, replace operators by it's the expectation value, ignoring the um, difference between expectation value of two operators and product of expectation value of one, of one point operators. I ignore it. Uh, it's a harmonic approximation of the Hamiltonian when everything is harmonic. And uh, linear response theory requires that this coefficient which stays here must be this structure factor. 
that's a linear response state, which is known independently from the ground state. So this comes from the ground state, and that part is kind of linearization of Galilean invariance, a consequence of Galilean invariance in harmonic approximation. Everything is fine here, except that, yes, with this Hamiltonian, sorry, with this Hamiltonian and this Poisson brackets, we can generate equations, and uh, that's how you go. Everything is fine here, except that Hamiltonian written in this form is not, does not belong to um, Lie algebra of the group which generates the flow. It's not sort of invariant with respect to uh, W infinity, or it's not invariant with respect to area preserving diffeomorphisms, but it must be, it must be a scalar. <clears throat> Which, why, why it happened? Because I uh, naively neglect uh, high order terms here by removing operators from replacing operators by symmetries. Okay. But since I know the group, I can start to restore high order terms one by one, one by one. Uh, uh, it's uh, ugly machinery, but it's doable. And uh, here's the result. Uh, so that's already Hamiltonian written in terms of classical objects. It's again consists of uh, kinetic Galilean kinetic energy, and that would be that would correspond to this term only, and uh, uh, linear product of this term only. But then there are higher order, higher corrections, which built entirely out of density. And this correction um, involves uh, quantum objects, which is logarithm of uh, determinant of Laplace, uh, Laplace Beltrami iterator, which actually given here. And there are several different effects which uh, I can combine together, and that is your Hamiltonian. If you, that subject is invariant with respect to area preserving diffeomorphism. But if you do harmonic approximation, namely expand density with respect to uniform density with small and leave only harmonic approximation, you will come back to that formula with precisely this complicated structure factor. It's sort of hidden, sort of hidden in all of this strange formula. If you start to expand in density with respect to the ground, this is what you obtain. But you also can obtain it from Lafrenoy function independently. And, uh, that's how it goes. So we get information from the ground state. That is uh, creation function. Um, so there is a question. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think uh, we are about uh, finish. To, to finish. Maybe you can. You can. Uh, yeah, 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 it's my last. It's basically my last slide. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm finishing uh, half a minute. Is it okay? Yes. Half a minute. Okay. I, I just want to summarize saying that I pick up information from ground state, not a trivial information at all. I assume that my system is uh, in harmonic approximation is Galilean invariant. And the rest follows from W infinity. The result we obtain is Hamiltonian with which we can study 
the optics, uh, excitation, excitation, of excitation, and so on. Now, uh, I'm, it's my last slide. Uh, what I missed is uh, that slide where I wanted to explain why this monstrous Hamiltonian looks like monstrous object have a physical meaning and consist of very recognizable pieces. For that, we need to look not for the Hamiltonian, but its stress tensor. Then it's absolutely recognizable piece by piece. When we come back to Hamiltonian, it sounds a bit uh, unusual, but I don't have time for that. And uh, thank you very much. It was uh, what I wanted to say. Appreciate it. Are there questions? Thank you. Okay, so let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much for, for the interesting seminar. And um, okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.